the sword in his hand and he's riding a white horse across this land he has fire in his eyes oh dear friends I'd like to talk to you today about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is really an uh, equipping of God for believers for a more effective ministry. Now, the scriptures are clear when Jesus said, if I go away, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send the Comforter, which is another name for the Holy Spirit, and he shall take it of mine and reveal it unto you. In other words, there's something about the infilling of the Holy Spirit that will uh, make the person of Jesus Christ God the Son, more real, more precious, uh, more beautiful, more glorious in all his splendor. There's a revelation of the person of Jesus Christ along with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Did I say infilling? Oh, earlier I referred to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Are they exactly the same? Are they synonyms? Well, yes and no. I guess it depends somewhat on the context. But uh, certainly Jesus said uh, he shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. But uh, the Bible also says when they're all filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, endued, with power from on high. So they are different nuances, different shades of the same uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit. Of course, the question always comes up, you know, uh, is the infilling of the Holy Spirit uh, speaking in tongues? And I, I can say without any mental reservation at all. No, it's not. There are many, many people who are greatly filled with the Holy Spirit who have never spoken in tongues. And inversely, there are people who have spoken in tongues. But I, I question uh, because of their behavior, whether they are indeed filled with the Holy Spirit. I tell you a, a story about the man who, who wanted to win the young lady's affections. And so he sent her gifts, sent her flowers at the beginning. I heard of a man who rather than send the object of his affections, a dozen roses, he sent her a dozen, dozen roses, or 144 long-stemmed roses in packages of 12. He was successful in not only gaining her attention, but winning her affections. <clears throat> And the gentleman to whom I was referring earlier, he lavished this young lady with gifts. And at some point he realized that she was enthralled with his ability to lavish her with gifts, but she lacked a personal affection and admiration and adoration of the gentleman from whom the gifts came. And in a similar way, we want, the, the Bible is very clear, desire earnestly the best gifts. So there's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to serve God 
by receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit in order to serve Him effectively and or more effectively. But I think we must always remember that the giver of the gifts is wanting our love for Him personally. Sometimes we use the uh, phrase, seek the giver, not the gifts. I speak from my personal uh, recollection and experience. I attended a church called the Ridgewood Fellowship, one of the churches, the main church of the Ridgewood Fellowship. And uh, the pastor of that church, his name was Hans Wolfogel, and he had a, a magnificent bass preacher's voice, and oh how he thundered. His uh, words as he spoke the word of God, and the essence of his message was, seek the giver and not the gifts how to love Jesus, how to have a personal relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, how Jesus becomes more precious to you, you love him more until your love for Jesus Christ encompasses your whole life, all your affections. And indeed, since Jesus Christ is God the Son, no less than God the Father or God the Holy Spirit. He is God. Scriptures very clearly teach us that shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, strength, mind, capabilities. And so in talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit or the in filling of the Holy Spirit. There was a time in my life where I, uh, I had received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I knew that I knew that I knew that I had become a child of God and that was an operation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit made that very clear and real to me. And I became hungry and thirsty for more taste and see that the Lord is good and uh, I tasted and it was good and I wanted more and so I said about it was in my uh, senior year in uh, college and uh, I dedicated to the Lord one hour a day of Bible study uh, personal Bible study and then one hour a day in prayer generally praying over the passage and personalizing the passage that I had just studied or the subject I had just studied. And it seemed rather mechanical. If I felt I'd finished my study at uh, 55 minutes, I had five minutes more to or review or go over or study again that passage. And of course sometimes prayer was mechanical. Sometimes I ran out of stuff about which to pray. That was just my personal limitations because that really never really happens. And as I embarked upon this for every day for weeks and months really it took primary priority over my my scholastic studies physics and math and they required study believe me but my hunger for god eclipsed everything else and after having done this for several weeks and months, I realized that I was beginning to sense the presence of God more and more. 
until the presence of God was so powerful in my perception that I remember clearly crossing the streets, well, waiting for the light to cross the street in uh, Manhattan, in New York, that I turned behind, be, to look behind me to see if Jesus wasn't there in all his magnificent splendor and his flowing robes as I pictured him from his days on earth. Of course, I didn't see him there, but I sensed his presence. And oh, that eclipsed everything. Now I'm a, I'm a father of three children, the grandfather of nine so far, and the great-grandfather of three children. And so I've experienced the love that one experiences in marriage. That's a beautiful thing. But then, experiencing the love of God, totally, uh, another ballpark completely, uh, totally eclipses anything, anywhere, that I have ever experienced here on earth. And my desire was to never grieve the Holy Spirit or do anything to disturb that presence of God that I was experiencing. The love, the joy, the peace, effervescent joy, indescribable. But it waned. But dear friend, some time after that, I was in a service, I'll tell you more about that, in church where I spoke in tongues. And I don't know all that happens when you begin to speak in tongues. But I can tell you from my perception, that time of walking in the presence of God far eclipsed speaking in tongues. I don't minimize speaking in tongues at all. But the presence of God and walking in the Spirit, really, is what I consider being filled with the Holy Spirit. And if God chooses to add speaking in tongues to walking in the Spirit, so be it. And I would certainly welcome that for myself and everyone, everybody and anybody else. But we're talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God coming upon us. And although the presence of God during that time waned and grasped as I may, <laughs> it couldn't hold on to that and there was no identical and the identical reason why that should have happened except that time that chapter in my life was moving on and that was not going to continue except uh, vignettes uh, short times of that happening again but we're called to walk by faith and not by sight, and that certainly was my desire. But here in the beauty of this afternoon, I just wanted to share with you, seek the giver, the glorious majesty of the person of Jesus Christ totally eclipses the, uh, the participation in or the being used by the Holy Spirit in any way, that's ministry, but nothing compares to the person of Jesus Christ and all ministry, in my opinion, should flow out of the personal relationship with Jesus Christ, hopefully empowered and directed by the Holy Spirit. Those are my musing this afternoon. and. I hope it's a blessing to you.
I'm being blessed even as I speak about it again. God bless you. My name is Pastor Roy. Actually, my title is Bishop Roy. But I'm a missionary to Romania and beyond. Actually, wherever I am, I am a missionary. And so are you. Thanks for listening. God bless you. And we'll see you again. Goodbye for now.